Welcome to Hood War Stories. In this episode, I'll be discussing the life of Lefty Gunplay. Franklin Scott Holliday was born on April 28, 1994, in Baldwin Park, California. Baldwin Park, located about 15 miles east of downtown Los Angeles, was one of the many suburbs in the San Gabriel Valley that boomed after World War II as a safe haven for young families lured by tidy starter homes. A demographic shift swept the southern part of the valley beginning in the 1970s as Latinos rapidly became the majority in Baldwin Park as well as neighboring cities, including El Mani and La Puente. The city has struggled with gang problems since the 1970s. Born to a Guatemalan mother who's originally from Guatemala City and a white father who's originally from Mississippi, when Lefty was two years old, his father left the family and moved to Florida. He would go on to be a well-off stockbroker. From then on, Lefty was primarily raised by his mother and grandmother with no male figure around. He grew up below the poverty line and lived in a mobile home park. As a kid, Lefty was embarrassed to bring friends to sleep over because of how small the house was. As a boy, he was energetic and outspoken. His love for performing and being the center of attention started early. In elementary school, he won a talent show by rapping a 50 Cent and Kanye song. This was the era where Kanye released College Dropout and when 50 was in his prime. Lefty wrote his first rap song in the third grade. When he was 12, he was getting bullied and beat up by two of the more prominent gangs in the city, Northside Bowling Park and Eastside Bowling Park. By age 13, after constantly getting into fights, he decided to join the KJ gang, who fully embraced him and provided him with protection and those male figures he didn't have growing up. KJ, which stands for Kings Have Arrived, was a tagging crew that began around 1991. Their vibe was to hang out, dish school, throw parties, and smoke weed all day. When Eastside Boulder members came around, KJ would stay quiet and avoid eye contact. Initially, they wasn't on that. They just wanted to tag the city up. Early on, it appeared the requirements to be in KHA was to be a pretty boy or come from a family with money that would lock in an invitation. By the 2000s, KHA made the transition from a tagging crew into a gang and added the 13. In Southern California, tagging crews turn into serenial gangs when a tagging crew's big homie or someone with high status goes to prison or the county. He'll hit the main line and get approached by numerous gangs. Depending on his get down, if he earns the respect of the fellow 13 gangs, the OGs will give him the green light to become 13. When he gets out of prison and hits the block, he'll spread the word to all the little tagger homies to get with the program if they're a gang now. Lefty would go into juvie when he was 14, and that's when he upped his fighting skills. Fighting against black gang members forced him to elevate his hand-to-hand -hand combat. He was released at 17 and attempted to go on a straightened path. He played varsity baseball and football. At wide receiver, he scored 17 touchdowns in his senior year. He briefly worked it in and out, and went on to graduate class of 2012 with a 3.0 GPA. He joined the fire department's explorer program and was about to get into the army. It seemed that he was headed in the right direction, but his gang ties sucked him into making decisions that were counterintuitive. Going on late night missions with his homies, getting arrested for whacking out an enemy's hood, then having cocaine in his sock. The gang and the drug use took over. Lefty began robbing houses. This was the time YG dropped Meet the Flockers, a song from his 2014 My Crazy Life album. During this period, a wave of primarily black males would target specific areas in LA County. Lefty has openly said the song inspired him to commit knock-knock burglaries. He continued to take a deep dive into the gang world, far from his pretty boy days when he was into his swag era phase. The mid-2010s would be his most active gang years. He claimed he was going out every night looking for enemies to shoot. At this point, KHA and Eastside Bullet had ended their alliance and were now rivals. KHA was applying retaliatory pressure to them and Northside Bullet. Sporadic shootings in a brief period had the city hot for a minute. One night, Lefty and the homegirl would go out to a flyer party. Things escalated between Lefty and a few guests at the party, where Lefty would allegedly open fire on a crowd with bullets. Surprisingly, no one was hit. Lefty has claimed he took a deal and spent the next nine years in jail. But arrest records have recently emerged, showing that Lefty will be in and out of prison for the duration of that time. The arrests ranged from vandalism in 2015, to carrying a loaded firearm in 2019, to possession of a controlled substance in 2021, to an arrest for an attic in possession of a firearm, toward the tail end of his time inside. His cellmate Jeff Five encouraged him to keep rapping and put the battery in his back. When he was released again in 2023, he dropped several freestyles on Instagram that got the streets buzzing. That December of 2023, his single certified stepper and spin the block gained the attention of OTR Records. He ended up signing with them, which was a power move for Lefty. In February 2024, he dropped his debut project Rookie of the Year, featuring the standout track Boulevard Babies. He followed that project up with Famous Gangbanger. In the midst of his rapid rise to fame, Lefty and a few entertainers exchanged back and forth shots over songs and on the internet. Lefty gunplay a bitch ass nigga. 
But let's not forget who you really are. This ass nigga just mad in his feelings because my nigga, my nigga pulled up to his city, did a no jumper on Adam's shit. You feel me? He's just mad because motherfuckers from Northern California is pulling up to your section in your area and making moves in place. But you ass niggas ain't never coming to the Bay Area making no motherfucking moves in place. Your whole swag, your whole persona, that whole shit, that's Bay Area shit. You motherfuckers out there is influenced by the Bay Area. You bitch ass niggas never used to talk like that, never used to dress like that. Period. You motherfuckers used to say we was black wannabes and whoop de woo -wah. And now look at you motherfuckers. Bay Area influenced by us motherfuckers. Niggas could never be us. Motherfuckers run around with bald heads, dirty ass t-shirts, and dirty ass Cortez. The fuck out of here. Things came to a head when Ortega rapper Bands dropped his lefty diss track titled The Frank Story. It shot the video of Lefty's hood. In the video, he could be seen at their liquor store and exact hangouts outside his mother's house, even spraying NX4 on the wall with a whack desk. In June of 2024, Lefty made headlines when he said he wouldn't allow his daughter to date a black guy. Me, myself, personally, I'm not gonna come home and, and or I'm not gonna let my daughter come home with a black dude. I'm gonna be like, what the fuck? You know what I'm saying? And that's just the way it is out here it, for, for, for my people. The statement itself caused backlash and threw off some of his black audience. A short time later in a follow-up interview, Lefty clarified his statement. Misconcepted. I just wanna break barriers and show people what is the truth in a lot of LA homes mm -hmm. and what that really goes down. Right. And if I'm lying, I'm dying. And I keep it real and I stand on what I say. And that's what's really going on in LA homes. I don't got no problem with blacks. I love blacks. But a lot of this is going on in a lot of Los Angeles homes, in East LA, in San Gabriel Valley, in areas like that. Despite the controversy and active beefs, Lefty has shown no signs of slowing down, seizing every opportunity that comes his way. He currently has a movie with Richard Cabral in the works. He just got a new apartment, and he's selling out shows all across LA County. Right now, the stars are aligning for a kid that came from nothing. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.